Dude, we built a bow deck. Yes, we did. We're going to show these people how to build a bow deck, too. We can try. So this is the boat that we worked with. That's a, a 16 foot Lund Laker. I got mm -hmm. it from a buddy on a trade. So yep. it was the best kind of boat. And the plan was to build a bow deck uh, for bow fishing so we could get some elevation, get over the water and, uh, and, and make yeah, shots. Sea down on the fish. Yep. Sea down on the fish, mm -hmm. exactly. <coughs> we chose to use 3 16 aluminum diamond plate. Why do we go 3 16 and not? For rigidity. Thinner? Uh, the, the thinner you go, the more support you need underneath it, or it's going to be flimsy. So if a guy doesn't have a shear, how do you cut this? You cut it with a plasma cutter, a skill saw, jigsaw. Now here we're cutting one inch by two inch eighth wall aluminum tube. <coughs> and this will be the main framework. And why did you go two inch and not save money on one inch? Uh, one inch wouldn't have been rigid enough. Two inch on end is plenty strong enough. Right here I'm cleaning the aluminum because aluminum is very fussy. It has to be absolutely clean. It looks clean, but it is not. Yeah, I you spent more time prepping the aluminum than you did making the welds. Absolutely. And the reason is if it's dirty, it won't weld. Now we got the frame welded up. We're setting it on here to see how it fits. Yeah. They didn't make the sheet big enough, so we had to piece in the front end. Once it gets up here like this high. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it's awesome. going to be sharp. Yeah. There's the trolling motor, big Minn Kota. And we sort of kind of lucked we into exactly it. You see where it fits. It bolts on perfectly in that front section Absolutely. of the diamond plate. And you'll see here, this is before we decided to read the instructions. Like yeah, read so the we instructions had it on backwards. Backwards, and it wasn't <laughs> overhanging enough. And then we see the instructions are out. There they are. We finally figured it out. You never read the instructions until the last second. And so here you're basically measuring up uh, where the holes are to attach the Nakoda to the bolt. Correct. Here um, we're punching the holes. Yeah. And this was actually easier than if a guy wants to put a troll motor on a boat because we had the piece of metal right here on the Absolutely. table to work with. Um, you'd have to make kind of a template or something if you were doing it in a yeah. boat. Yeah, That's a different aluminum. Yeah, That's this is one by one square tube where we're just putting in between for more support and where the trolling motor was going to mount. Right, because if we put that trolling motor directly to diamond plate, Correct. it would shear. It, it, it would flex. Flex. So we put in some square tube on the bolts for us to make it more rigid. Yeah. Here we're cleaning it again. You can't clean the aluminum enough if you're going to weld it with a TIG welder. <coughs> so we blocked it up here with your dad. <laughs> well, it's not my dad, but it's a guy I fish with a lot, Jack. 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 Yeah. I thought this whole time I thought Jack was your dad. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. That so is... here we got two by two aluminum angle that we put on the inside of the boat at an angle. So when this sits on there, it's already rigid. Uh, we clamp it later on just so it couldn't jump off the boat. But this way we didn't have to bolt it to the boat. We just use a couple of hand clamps and it holds it secure if you're going down a wavy, you know, jumping up and down in the waves, it isn't going to jump off. Day three, you were at it early, man. I got there before the camera was on. You were welded. That's right. Here we were just testing it out. And this was actually, that's like kind of a funny clip, but that was the point where we learned we needed to put a step in it. Correct. Like testing it. Because it was too high to step up on the bridge. Absolutely. Just mount the trolling motor. Yeah, so we just measured Well, I don't think we mounted it. What we were doing is making sure the rails. Oh, we that's right. Checking. We set it up there to make sure the rails weren't going to. Here yep. we're coping the aluminum pipe. Yep. Which I got a hand coper. You can put in a press break or do it by hand, hit it with a hammer. It gives you that fish mouth. Now, one of the things we did here, and we talked about this endlessly, was do we angle the rail straight up off the deck or angle it in or angle it out? Right. And we went with angling it out because in the shop it felt to me like you could really get over the water. Lean over and use your knee to support you against the rail. But having fished it for a season, it's almost a little too much. It is. When you're in the water and waves. So mm -hmm. I think ultimately if we're going to do it again, we go straight up. We did up. it straight up. Yeah. 
Here we're fish mousing the one by two for steps so you can get up in there easier. <laughs> yeah, the step is nice because you have the bench and the bolt and then to the step and it just it's all it just fit nice. Per works work real good. Day four. Yep. We're tired right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it took about three days longer than I thought it would. Till 11, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. But all the electronics, the power strip, that's an 1100 watt inverter, all that stuff I got on Amazon. Um, the lights too, I think I was in it for like 330 bucks for <laughs> lights, inverter, uh, and the power strip. Uh, the batteries, that's a different story. It took takes seven batteries to run all this, you know? So <laughs> yeah. If the boat ever goes down, you'll fry everything in the lake. But. And he put the batteries towards the back to help counterbalance our weight up on the nose. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great point. So basically, the lights, they're stadium lights. You can get them right online. You can see them right there. Those are on uh, AC power. So, but we, you clearly don't have that in a boat. You have a bunch of marine batteries, so that inverter converts it so we can run these stadium lights, uh, as you'll see here, under the deck. And that's what lights up the water so you can, you can fish at night. Those are self-tapping screws. How many of those did we use? Oh, God, we used Four. a ton of them. Yeah, Over buy, buy the big box, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Testing out the lights with upside down. This was the point of the build where I got it started getting pumped up. Right. It came We're getting real. closer We're now. We're getting close. Yeah. And that tangle of wires, man. It was like Medusa under there. <laughs> That's you know? right. We had to put a wood deck up there just so we could hold our cup. Yeah, yeah, the wood table. Just the, there's a wood shop next door to Jeff's place, and he came over with a table and that nice piece of butcher block That's that right. we're going to use in a minute. Yeah, it's a little heavy, you know. It's a little heavy for two people to take on and off. But possible. I've taken it on and off twice now, <laughs> only with two people every right? time. But it snaps right in, beautiful. Fit in solid. Solid. Those truck clamps work super good. Now the motor just gets bolted on. That's very straightforward. If you think about it, the trolling motor was the easiest thing we did. It was. It was the easiest thing to do. And then you route, those wires route down through the deck to the batteries. It was GPS controlled trolling motor, yes? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's what we're doing here. We're putting in the GPS unit. Um, and when the, or that's actually the GPS beacon, I think it is, and that basically figures out the direction of the boat relative to, you know, actual coordinates, and that's the unit itself, and you can set it up, so, like, if you're, the fish are in 10 feet of water, you can autopilot it, so right. the motor will know to hover along that 10-foot contour line, um, pretty, pretty awesome. This is the transducer, which, you know, it reads the bottom. It's basically the sonar. This here, we were like straight up dishonest with this video edit. I'm going to just <laughs> let people know. That's let's, right. Let's be honest. We ed wire this boat up in about two minutes here on video. It took, what, four hours? <laughs> four hours, yeah. minimum. Minimum. I mean, it, it was a, a while. But basically, I think the... The, the important talking points here are it's eight gauge wire. Yep. Bigger gauge is better. Bigger the better. So we ran parallel for the lights because we oh, basically yeah. had to keep it at 12 volts right. for those lights to run. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, trolling motor, they're in a series and that gives us the 36 volts, which gives us the power. Um, we ran four batteries in the aft of the ship with one being the motor and the electronics yeah and, or the and the gps the gps three being the lights mm -hmm. and then the motor th there are three batteries for the trolling motor up front Correct. and we did that you know haha because if there's a fire <laughs> on the back you can at least get back that's right know? if we melt one bank of batteries <laughs> the the batteries we need to move the boat are are separated correct and the other thing is that's a, I think it's a 72 inch shaft, so it can go really deep, so it holds the boat in waves. Um, the other thing about that troll motor is it cooks. Mm. Seven knots oh, it with goes a tail quick. Wind. It's real nice. Yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. I didn't expect that.
And there we are. There we are. And now the fish are in trouble. <laughs> it really lit up the water real well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, man, I can't thank you enough. You took this idea, and I wouldn't have been able to make it possible. It was a great it. time. It was fun. An opening day for carps coming up. Ready Absolutely. to get out there with me? Yes, sir. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. You bet.